What's up guys, welcome back to another Resident Evil video and today I bring to you a Resident Evil Reverse tier list video and I'm going to be doing a tier list of all the characters and creatures. So pretty straightforward, without further ado, let's get into the main man himself, Chris Redfield. And Chris Redfield is going to be the first person to make the S tier spot because he is definitely just such a solid character. They gave him a invulnerability effect or a skill that makes him invulnerable to all attacks for a short period of time that I just activated as you see there and his other move is a punch so he's got a pretty good power weapon move and a pretty good survivalist move next up we have is Jill Valentine and Jill I'm gonna have to put in the A spot and not in the S tier, unfortunately, for fans of Jill. But I don't think Jill is that good. She doesn't have the invulnerability stuff, and her moves are the landmines, which never really get anyone, and that knife ability. But that's about it. Next, though, we've got Leon Kennedy, and Leon I'm going to have to put in the S tier. I was debating putting him in the A tier, but I'm going to put him in the S tier because what I like about him more than Jill is that he's got the roundhouse kick ability which actually does stun enemies a lot more than Jill's knife in my opinion and Leon has the dual weld handguns which is a good spray weapon plus his shotgun. Next up Claire Redfield and for Claire I'm gonna have to put her in the S tier and not only that but above Leon below Chris. I think Claire is actually one of the best characters in the game up there with her brother Chris but Claire has the invulnerability shot dose, that's only if you use the actual coin. What's so good about Chris is he comes with it, so you could go in with no coins whatsoever, and as Chris you could still have that ability, but with Claire, you gotta have that coin. And not only that, but with Claire, her survivability is through the roof, so if you have that coin, you're gonna be set for an easy game. Next up is Ada Wong, and if you guys noticed, I put her at the top of the S tier, above Chris and above everyone else, because everyone that I ever played this game with or up against, everyone says that Ada's the best character and they have some of the best games as Ada, and I quite frankly agree because her somersault kick and her pipe bomb arrow and everything is just really good mobility and really good for resetting fights and being able to take over a player in any situation. Okay, next up is Hunk, and I don't know if this is going to be a controversial one or what, but I have a special place for Hunk in my heart, and for that I have to put him in the S tier, but I've played the game a lot and I've played all the characters to where I can actually be fair and put him just only above Leon in the S tier because I don't think he's better than the other characters when it comes to like Claire and Chris for having the invulnerability and for Ada for just being as OP as she is but Hunk I really like because I always tend to do good as Hunk with his assassinate I always think a lot of people don't really understand Hunk for as good as he is but Hunk is an S tier character. But next up we have is Tundra, and Tundra is not so OP in my opinion. I think Tundra is the worst of the worst, and I think some people would agree. So with that being said, Tundra is going to be in the D spot as definitely the worst character in my opinion when it comes to the Wolfhound Squad members because Tundra doesn't really have anything uh, worth doing that's going to really mess anyone up. Tundra's handgun ability though with the R1 is really hard to pull off in my opinion. The killer B shot I think it's called. And the virus capsules don't really do much for you in fights. Okay so next we've got Night Howl. And Night Howl there isn't really much to say about. The only thing I can really say about Night Howl is Night Howl is lucky to be in the B spot because of the fact that they came out with the update for Night Howl to have the coin that inverts players movements with his drone. Next up is Umber Eyes, and Umber Eyes I think is probably going to go down as my favorite Wolfhound Squad member in Reverse. He is really good overpowered character with his night vision, which pretty much just gives you the ability to see players through walls, even the creatures. 
So that is really overpowered. And his flashbang grenade is really good. It's perfect for stunning enemies and it's exactly what you want. And he's the only character in the game with a sniper rifle and it's pretty good. After reviewing Umber Eyes more, I decided to put him at the top of the A list above Jill. But that's where I'm going to leave him now for good. And moving on, we have Lobo. With Lobo, he's an interesting character that I never really cared much for, but I do like where they're going with adding him in the game because you can stun a lot of the enemies and creatures with his shoulder charge ability. And his stationary machine gun move has never really been useful for me, I've found. Next up now we have K9, and if you saw I put Lobo in the C spot, well K9 is also going in the C spot, but I'm going to put him just below Lobo, because they're both about mid characters for me, I feel the same about them. The only thing that's really cool about K9 is he comes with the officer pursuit or whatever it's called, but it pretty much gives you the same effect as umber eyes where you can actually see through walls see the characters and it makes your speed increased so you could debatably say it's like umber eyes but better but umber eyes with his sniper rifle is just too op and it's pretty cool that he's the only character in the game that has a gun like that because it makes him actually stand out from the rest and if there was more characters in the game with that kind of loadout, then it would make Umber Eyes literally pointless. Enough talking about the Wolfhound Squad members though, because now we are moving on to the creatures, and we are finally done with all of the humans. So, on to the creatures, we're going to start with the worst of the worst. Obviously you saw the Fat Molded I put in the D spot at the very bottom, because that's where they belong. A lot of people don't really ever use them. But I've actually gotten some pretty good kills with them and found myself in some good situations where the molded helped me. Next up on the list of creatures, we've got the lichen. And the lichen I never really cared for that much, to be honest, because I thought his finisher move that he has is pretty hard to pull off in a lot of situations. I kind of just go straight melee attacks whenever I use the lichen. And that seems to find me the best success whenever I'm using the Lycan, but regardless, that's why I put the Lycan in such low spot in this tier list. Next up here is the Hunter Gamma, or Gamma Hunter, or whatever you even want to call it, because I call it the Gamma Hunter, and I know a lot of people like to call it Hunter Y, or whatever, but regardless, I like this creature and i like when i get this creature because i do like the fact that you can stun with the acid spit and it works really good and the finisher animation is one of my favorites in the game so debatably one of the best characters that only requires one virus capsule next up we got is good old jack baker and for jack baker i feel like he belongs in the a spot because he is one of the best creatures in the game to use and he only requires one virus capsule but his swinging attack and his finisher animation when he grabs you both together are exactly what you would need for a creature and his movement isn't super slow so you can get around pretty quick and catch the human players pretty easily next up here though we have is nemesis and just like i was talking about with baker i like his movement and i do not care for the nemesis slow movement that's why i'm gonna put him in the a spot but notice i did put him above baker because i do believe that he is a more op character than jack baker and you can get off more kills before dying with nemesis but i just feel like his movement is super slow and pulling off his finisher animation is pretty hard as you can see i'm trying to get it off there on that chris and i just could not lastly though we have none other than mr x the super tyrant and this one i put right up in the s tier because this one is definitely my favorite creature in resident evil reverse and i don't know how many people feel about that i could see people being on the side of nemesis or i could see people being on the same side as me with the super tyrant but his movement is just way faster than Nemesis, and his, everything about him, his finisher animation, is so easy to pull off, and it makes him even faster when you're doing the finisher animation towards someone, 
And it's no doubt about it that I would prefer having Mr. X any day over Nemesis. Whenever I get those two virus capsules, I always hope for Mr. X. And whenever I do have Mr. X, I'm always in my zone and I'm always most dominant. So that's it there though for my list. And hopefully you guys agree with everything I have up there on my tier list. I believe Ada is probably the best character and I believe the Super Tyrant is probably the best creature. So I would be really excited to see in the future maybe if Reverse comes out with new characters. I would 100% do another tier list video of these characters. But if not, let me know what you guys want to see from me next. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.